Hey guys, and welcome back to Danganronpa. So we just got Mondo Awada hints on the murder of Fujisaki. So now we're going to go ahead and get with his execution. To ask for the goddamn verdict. Roger that. Wait, hold on. No waiting. No holding on. Time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Grab your lever and give it a yank. All right, let's all vote. Who will you elect as the blackened this time around? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? Who's it going to be? What is it going to be? Here we go. The Monokuma vote. Uh, Mondo! We were right! Nanto. This time, it looks like you got it right again. Yes, it was so. The blackened that killed Chihiro Fujisaki was... Mondo Awada. In case you are wondering, the vote was not unanimous. Kiyotaka chose the wrong answer. You're treading very close to the danger zone, Mr. Ishimaru. You need to be more careful. I refuse to believe it. There's no way, no way that he could have killed someone. Sorry. Why are you apologizing? Why, 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 why? He really can't accept it. Why did you do it? All right, he accepted it. Well, it looks like it looks like Mondo's taking a vow of silence. So allow me to explain it on his behalf. The story of his murder this time is the sad story of two men. But for anyone who doesn't really want to hear it, you can press the O button to fast forward through the text. Anyways, there was once a young boy. His name was Chihiro Fujisaki. He had an extremely high inferiority complex regarding his own lack of strength. You're so weak, even though you're a boy. He'd heard things like that for as long as he could, remember? And he couldn't overcome his weakness. On the contrary, he tried to hide and bury himself further and further into that weakness. To take on a fragile form of a petite young girl. He had chosen that as his way out. Now, nobody will be able to say anything about even though you're a boy. No matter how tightly he wrapped himself into that shell, the inferiority complex had already taken root deep into the side of him and was not so easily weeded out. As it turned out, the shell was completely empty. The complex didn't disappear. Instead, it only grew stronger and stronger. I'm weak. Once the killing game had begun here in the school, he had no choice but to accept this fact. After all, the world is survival of the fittest. If you're not strong, you don't survive. And then the lovely Davi, hateful Monokuma, announced the revealing of the most embarrassing secrets. Which, of course, included Chihiro's embarrassing secret, which I was more than willing to divulge. Even though he dresses like a girl, Chihiro is actually a boy. And that was something Chihiro couldn't let anyone else find out no matter what the cost. If that was revealed, it wouldn't be the end. The hardened shell would crack. The armor would fall away. Without a doubt, those around him would torture him more than ever before. Everyone figured being trusted uh, thrusted into such a dilemma must have sent him spiraling into despair. And yet. Sorry, I don't really want to talk about it right now. So that's when we were trying to decide the, the most embarrassing stuff. But I also don't want to leave things as they are. So maybe I can talk about it later. So he was looking to reveal it later. 
after I try my best to become strong, then I can tell everyone. So he just wasn't ready. Annoyingly, he used the, thro uh, the threat of discovery to motivate himself to become stronger. Uh. Now's my chance. I'm going to get stronger and accept who I am. Strong enough so that when someone says, even though you're a boy, I'll be okay. I'll get better. With that thought at the front of his mind, he resolved to take immediate action. And so, that day, he made the commitment to begin exercising. He was prepared to retain his, uh, re retrain his mind and body. But sadly, that would be the first and only chance he would get at it. When he decided to start exercising, he thought it would be a good to ask for someone's help. But he wanted to tell that person his secret first, and then ask him to help him there. And that person he went to, it was me. Yep, it sure was. The biker gang fella had been painfully clear about how important his manly promises were. So Chihiro probably figured that even if he confided in Mondo, his honor would make him keep the secret. So, Mr. Macho Mondo was a very symbol of a strong man that Chihiro had always aspired to. Maybe talking to Mondo about it will help me give me call er, some courage. So, he went and asked Mondo to help him become strong. That was his aspiration. And he thought that only with Mondo's support would he be ever be able to come close to that. So. so then, that must be why Mondo did what he did. To keep the promise he made to Chihiro. Huh? Did... What? He did? What? You mean, that's why Mondo carried Chihiro from the boys' locker room to the girls' locker room? Hey. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> Wasn't that to cover up what he'd done? That's funny. It could have been part of it, but I don't think that was the main reason. The real purpose was to keep the promise between men that he'd made with the Chihiro. Chihiro. But how does moving the body keep a secret? Well, then no one would know that he was a, a boy. Because if everyone knew that he'd been killed in the boys' locker room, then everyone would have been arguing about she got into the boys' locker room, right? Once that started up, uh, at least a few of us would have been immediately began to suspect his identity. So, he tried to protect Chihiro's secret by putting him in the girl's locker room and sealing, and stealing his handbook, see? And Mondo did all that to keep the promise he made to Chihiro, who he'd also killed. Why would he do that? The more I hear you talk, the more I don't understand. I mean, you guys trusted each other, right? So why? Why did you? Because no matter what, I didn't want anyone to know. Yeah, buddy. So that's what triggered it after all. The possibility of having your embarrassing memories and secrets exposed. That's impossible. Nothing could have been that bad. Something he didn't want anyone to know, even if it meant killing someone. That's impossible. How many times must I repeat myself? To judge others by your own standards is the height of folly. Even if you can't comprehend it, he obviously can. That's all there is to it. Well, while we're, out, we're on the subject, why don't I tell you? The embarrassing memory, that secret he didn't want anyone to know. You know what Mondo did? He killed his own brother. Mondo, the ultimate biker gang leader, makes all the hoodlums and riffraffs across the country tremble. But the only one he had the chance to uh, join a gang in the first place was because of a certain someone. Mondo's older brother's name was Daya Awada. Mondo had nothing but respect for him. It was because of Daya that Mondo ever got on in a motorcycle. Mondo's brother was the only family growing up. 
he was the only one Mondo could trust or respect. He wanted to measure up to his big brother, so he imitated him in everything he did. Mondo was the epitome of starry-eyed kid brother. Meanwhile, the charismatic older brother had put together a local motorcycle gang. And before anyone knew it, it had grown into the biggest biker gang in the country. Daya, the older brother, number one in the gang, and his number two, his younger brother Mondo. In the beginning, everything was peaches and gravy. But when Mondo started to think about how he would have to take over the gang from his brother someday, his brother's greatness, his reputation, began to gnaw on Mondo's very soul. The kid's gonna take over for Daya, huh? Daya created the gang with his bare hands. Mondo's just along for the ride. Can someone like that really be our leader? All that'll do is make the gang look bad. Almost every day, Mondo, Mondo heard the gossip and whispers of the other gang, other members of the gang. Which is why... I gotta get stronger. Stronger than Daya. Once. Just one time. No matter what, I gotta win. I don't care what it takes, I gotta come out on top. And on top, and on that night of his amazing brother's retirement ceremony, Mondo challenged him to a street race. But during that race, a tragedy struck. The kid brother pushed ahead of the reckless abandoned eager for victory and dashed into oncoming traffic. But suddenly, the bro saved him. Laying in his kid brother's arms, the older brother delivered his final words. My bad, kid. I fucked up. Sorry. Of course he knew it was his older his brother's fault, but Daya never blamed him for what happened. Hey, kid. The rest is up to you. No matter what, you gotta keep the gang together. Because it's the team. You and me. Put together. It's a promise between men. He decided to hide the truth of what happened from everyone else in the gang in order to keep the gang together and keep the promise to his brother. He could never admit to anyone that it was his own weakness that caused the accident. And as a result, the team was made even stronger under the banner of the kid who bested his big brother. Daya was going to lose to his kid brother so he got stupid and got himself killed. That became the explanation for what happened. Mondo's lie became the truth. He wanted to lead the team so bad he was willing to tell all kinds of lies about his brother. I'm strong. And yet... As soon as our killing game began, he realized no matter how tough he pretended to be, he was just another weakling that could die in an instant. And then the lovely, the hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassment secrets. At that point, it was clear I had no problem shedding lights on his secret. Mondo killed his own brother. No matter what, I couldn't let the other gang members find out. If that happened, everything would have been ruined. Everything me and my brother had worked to create would have been destroyed. His death, all the guilt I'd been carrying around, it all would have been for nothing. So that's why. That's why. After I saw what Monokuma had on me, my head filled up with all kinds of fuzziness, fuzzy uneasiness, and I just started swirling around I'd never felt anything like that before I don't know what to do about it I sure I sure or I wasn't sure what to think or say but after a while that fuzziness and un uneasiness <laughs> turned itself into a rock hard lump of anxiety way down in my stomach and it was around right around then that Chihiro asked me to work out with him and right there, he told me a secret. 
Seriously? Jesus! Yeah, sorry I lied to you. But why? Why now? Why are you telling me this all of a sudden? Huh? Because, I mean, you've kept that secret all this time, right? If anyone found out, you would... You're right, but... I want to change. I wrap myself in lies. I'm weak. I want to destroy that version of me forever. His words were like a knife in my gut. I felt like he was exposing the lie that he'd been living himself. I have to change. I don't want to be weak anymore. You're so strong. It can't hurt you, right? Whatever secret Monokuma might tell us. So what? You're saying I should just say it? You're saying if I really am... I should just be able to tell everyone my secret? I was jealous. I was jealous of Chihiro's strength. He had the strength to face his own weakness, to try and overcome it. It was the kind of strength I've never had. I was jealous of him. And that jealousy broke me. Are you making fun of me? I'm strong? Are you fucking with me right now? I'm not making fun of you. You really are strong, Mondo. I felt like I could hear something starting to creak. Something inside my head. <laughs> what did he want me to do? What was I supposed to do? Was I supposed to just sit back and let my secret get revealed and ruin everything? What's wrong? Why did you have to tell me all that? Are you trying to rub my failure in my face? No, I just really admire you. I admire your strength. That's right. I am strong. Strong. I'm strong. <laughs> stronger than you. <laughs> I'm stronger than Daya. Daya. I don't remember anything after that. <laughs> when I woke up again, he was laying in my feet covered in blood. I had a dumbbell in my hand and I was staring at him down on the ground. <laughs> I killed him. I killed Chihiro. Even after all this time, I was just as weak as I've been. And thanks to that, I did something I could never take back. Mondo. He was normally so aggressive, so angry. He hid that weakness side from everyone. That was his secret. A weakness like that lived in a heart like his. And it turned him cold hearted. God damn it! <laughs> Look at him, you see? You're all just like him. From a, uh, for a secret from the past, for a memory, for that he killed another human being in cold blood. He couldn't cut free from his regrets from the outside world. He doesn't know what true strength is. Do you see hope anywhere in, in there? Because I sure don't. You bastard. <laughs> Just shut up, you son of a bitch. Go ahead. Say that again, I dare you. Okay, I'll say it as many times as I want. Is what I want to say, but... Unfortunately, I can't do that right now because the time for punishing is fast approaching. Punishing? You mean execution? That's what I promised you, right? The blacken that disrupts the peace will be punished. Hold on. Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment for Mondo Awada, the ultimate biker gang leader. No, no, wait. Let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time. I said wait. Sorry, man. I couldn't keep the promise we made. From one man to another. I'll see you guys after this.
legit just liquefied him. Laugh at death and your soul will forever be at peace. It can't be. My brother. Another murder and another execution. I want to feel again. Everyone's lives are taken so lightly here. I feel like I might be going mad. Maybe I'll just let it happen. Ishimaru is not handling it well. As Taka's sad scream invaded our skulls, we were each forced to realize once again. But of course, he had to. What a disappointment. This is the end of the game. Yakuya? You're completely insane. Do you know that? A game? One of our friends just died. Do you realize that? Of course I do. Because this game is life or death. I don't have anything to say to you. I don't have any response except that. I just don't understand why. Why do you go out of your way to disguise Mondo's crime? Why? Isn't it obvious? Because it made things more interesting. His voice was calm, emotionless, like the voice of death. It chilled me to the bone. <laughs> Last night, when the murder took place, I was at the library as usual. <laughs> so you ignored the nighttime rule too. That rule never mattered to me. I don't recall agreeing to it. <laughs> well, I don't particularly care. Please continue. <laughs> that night grew late, and I decided to return to my room, which is when I stumbled upon him. I spotted Mondo coming out of the girls' locker room. After he'd gone, I looked inside and saw the corpse. You mean you actually witnessed the murder? He was such a fool. He didn't have the slightest idea that I'd even seen him. So you're saying that you knew who the culprit was from the very beginning? Indeed. But if that had been the end of it, how boring would have that been? I mean, what a waste of time to have to answer revealed right at the beginning. Which is why I decided to lend a little helping hand. I thought that would liven things up. You did all that to liven things up? So after hearing about Genocide Jack from Toko, you decided to use that. To create a fake murder scene? But damn, man. If you hadn't figured out who'd really done it, you would have had been dead too, right? <laughs> well, obviously, I would have revealed the truth before it reached that point. Of course. Yakuya turned and looked at me in the eye. I feel his sharp eyes piercing into me. They said certain remarkable someone, it never did, and I was able to form an interesting experiment. Once I did decide to become the blackened, I now know who I'll have to watch out for. So that was your reason. Are you satisfied? Yes, we're done listening to your story. Moving on. There's something I'd like to ask Monokuma. Oh, I'm up next? You like to perform these elaborate executions each time, correct? My question is why? Do you like them? Do you know this punishment, this despair, it's not just for you. All this punishment, all this despair is my gift to mankind itself. You're over-exaggerating. I'm not over-exaggerating. These punishments are meant to transform all hope to despair. What do you mean? 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 Mean. Mean, 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 mean. Good grief. I don't understand why you have to pick e apart every little stupid thing. <laughs> Whatever, it doesn't matter. In the end, I'm going to stand alone as the victor, and then everyone will, or everything will be revealed to me. Ah, the noble son of the noble family. Truly, you understand me. I think this is the start of a terrifying friendship. Shut up. I would never stoop to the level of a childish criminal like you. Let me just say this. After I've achieved complete victory, you're up next. I'm going to find you and kill you, understand? In the name of the Togami family, for which victory is a foregone conclusion. Oh, so cool. It's like you're the main character of a video game or something. No trash mob for you. I swear whatever it takes, I will kill you. Temper temper. Sounds like someone needs a nap. And there we have it, guys. 
the end of chapter two. So Minakuma's laughter peeled across the courtroom and the curtain closed on the case of Chihiro and Mondo. But I knew that wasn't the end. The killing game would still go continue. Because the mastermind wouldn't let it end. And for those of us who were still alive, our worst fear and despair kept on multiplying. That was a kind of despair that felt like a blind puppy in hell had more in the future than us. All of our courage, our effort, our friendship, it felt like it amounted to nothing at all. It was the worst kind of despair. Ooh, what is this? Well, anyways, like I was saying, this is a pretty good spot, yeah? A, total, a really good spot. Anyways, isn't it amazing how the girl went and killed someone before even things had a chance to get boring? Once things get moving, it'll be like a roller coaster. There won't be any way of stopping it. Fear and despair charge forward at a speed nothing can hope to match. But I must admit, I am disappointed. I went through all the pain and effort of making you part of the group, and yet you couldn't play your part. You do remember you were supposed to make the first move, right? Well, no biggie. Nothing we can do about it now, so just do your best to make things more exciting from now on, okay? Oh, he's talking to someone. A rat. After all, that's what everyone else wants to see. There is an audience. There's one thing I'd like to ask you. As long as you don't want to know my measurements, fire away. Who is it? The 16th high school student, I mean. Oh, another revelation. My, my, you really took me by surprise there. I knew I said, I know I said that you could ask me anything, but super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied, because you see, that's my ace in the hole. And nobody be dumb enough to reveal that right, no matter how close they were to their friends. Another revelation. Chapter 2, Boy's Life of Despair, complete. The end. We're down to 10. To be continued. There we have it, guys. That's the end. Woo! Pretty, in pretty interesting. We got the crazy diamond present. All right, guys. But that is it for this episode. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will.